Hello and welcome to Favork. I'm Brian Watrous and this is part 31 in a 10 part video series where we're learning all about Orchestrator. As you can see from the title here, this time what we're going to be talking about is something called resource elements. Let's jump in. Resource elements are in many ways similar to what we studied in the previous six videos. Um, back then we were talking about configuration elements. So resource elements and configuration elements are not exactly the same thing, but a lot of the mechanics of how you use them are very similar. And the, the whole purpose of them is very similar. In both cases, configuration elements and resource elements um, allow us to create a repository of different types of things. Configuration elements uh, or configurations in general is a repository of configuration attributes and their values. On the other hand, resource elements are used for creating a repository of files. Because uh, as you might imagine, in various orchestrator workflows, you may use files in a number of different ways. For instance, maybe you're creating a bunch of workflows that need to send email when they're done doing whatever they're doing, and the format of that email needs to be the same no matter which workflow is sending the email. So what you might want to do is well, here's the wrong thing to do. You could hard code the template of what the email should look like. You could hard code that template into each workflow. But for the same reason we talked about in the previous six videos, hard coding things like that into a workflow is problematic. Instead of hard coding the template for the email we're going to send into each workflow, you could create the template once in just a plain old text file, put that email template into the resource element repository, and then any workflow that needs to send email will just bring in that, that text file from the resource repository. Or another example of how you might use resource elements, the example I'm going to actually demonstrate here this in the next video is, what if you had one or more workflows that are supposed to do something like connect to some Linux machine out there in your environment, or maybe a Windows machine, doesn't have to be Linux, but connect to some Linux machine and run some commands on that machine. It'd be nice instead of hard coding those commands uh, into each of the workflows, it'd be nice if we could put those commands into a script file and then import that script file as a resource in the resource element repository. That's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do here in a few moments. But um, last bullet point here, if you haven't seen the previous six videos where I talked about configuration attributes, you might want to go view those first. If you can't, bother to view all six. Go back three videos from here. Let's see, this is 31, so 29, 28. I think in uh, tw video 28 or 27, I showed you how to actually use configuration elements and configuration attributes. So you might want to just at least view that one. But for everyone else, let's plug onwards here. I'm going to go into my lab environment. And in the lab environment, uh, to create configuration attributes and so forth, I would go to the configurations tab. Obviously, to create resources, I'm going to go to a different tab, the one right next to it labeled Resources. So I'm going to click on Resources, and uh, just as we've seen in many other instances, uh, there's a folder structure. If you want to create your own folder, just right-click the topmost node, choose New Folder, which you can see I've already done here. I've created a, a, a folder called Vivork, and in there I've imported three different files. These each happen to be different uh, graphics files. One's a GIF, one's a JPEG, one's a PNG. Um, but these are just graphics files that I might want to use in various ways in my workflows. So I can import a text file like the script file I'm about to import, or I can import graphics files, or I can import essentially any kind of file I want. And that's what I want to show you how to do. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to import something into this resource folder. So you right click the folder and from the pop-up menu, you choose to import resources. And when you import resources, all I'm going to do here is point to the file that I want to import into the repository. Now, one of the things you may have noticed that's a little different from configurations is there's with configurations, there's the configuration element and then the configuration attributes. There's two levels there. With resources, you just can create a folder and import the files. There's no, no element type concept. You just import the resource. So I have on my desktop a file called super amazing script, and I'm going to import it by clicking open. So select the file, click open, 
And now I have another resource in my resources repository. Now, unlike the previous ones, which were graphics files, uh, this one's a text file. If I wanted to, I could show you that text file by opening up something like notepad.exe and showing you that file. But if you want to see these files while you're in the Vero client, you don't have to leave the client and go to some utility. You can just select the item that you're interested in. So I'm going to look at my script file, go to the viewer tab, and you can see the contents of that file. Now, mind you, this file was imported. So if I go change the actual file itself, that's not going to change what orchestrator sees. Orchestrator is always going to see the, the most recently imported version of the file. If you actually go change the file and want the resource repository to reflect that change, you need to make certain that you come back to the repository, right click and choose update resource. And that'll pull in the, 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 the new script or the new, new graphics file or the new whatever it may be. Now in this case, I haven't changed the underlying file, so I don't need to do the, the uh, update resource option, but I probably ought to just point out to you, uh, in case you've never seen a Linux file here, so this first line here, I'm lying, this isn't quite true, but it begins with the pound sign, so we'll just say that's a comment that's gonna get ignored. Uh, in these four lines, I'm creating some Linux variables called hostname, OS, release, and build by doing some commands, variations on the uname command, so that later on I can have this workflow spit out the name of the host that this script runs on, and additionally, uh, other information, such as what OS is it running, what release, what build number. And again, you'll see that in the next video when we actually make use of this resource. But one other thing here, while I'm here, uh, in my resources folder, you'll notice I have some graphics files. Again, if you select a graphic file and go to the viewer tab, you'll see graphics files or you'll see text files, or you'll see whatever type of file it is you're working with. Actually, I lied. There's one other thing I almost forgot. When you're editing a, when you are editing a, a, excuse me, when you're importing a file, uh, it's important to pay attention to the MIME type and make certain that this value is actually correct because as you'll see in the next video, when I want to use this resource, if I want to use something like these graphics files, such as we see in our example first three, notice that they're all marked for the MIME type as image slash PNG or image slash JPEG or image slash GIF, as opposed to my text file, which is just text slash plain. If you're not already familiar with the concept of MIME, what's that stand for? Multi interchange memorandum. I forget uh, what MIME stands for. It's an acronym. Go to wikipedia.org, search for MIME, M-I-M-E, and you can find out about what we're talking about with these MIME types. But it's not super important for us as orchestrator developers when we're creating the, when we're importing the resource, because as far as I've ever seen, orchestrator always figures out what the type is. But later on in the next video, when we make use of this resource, you're gonna need to know what this type is so that you can import the right sort of thing. So having said that, um, that's it for this video. All I wanted to show you in this video is how to create the items in the resource repository, but we haven't used them yet. So join me in the next video, video number 32, where I'll show you how to make use of what we just did. So I'll see you in the next video.